Howdy folks, today we are looking at some updates to the probing routine to make things a bit more efficient, and then we'll also do a, a dry run of an automated surfacing routine. So right off the bat, you'll see that we are probing off the top now instead of tracing around the sides. We're going to be uh, wasting a lot less effort here. So comes off the end, knocks back, kind of does what you expect now. Instead of just bouncing all the way back like we did before, it's going to go back where it started and another probe width past it and then uh, continue walking the other direction. So we saved ourselves a lot of kind of useless, useless probes there. Now it'll come back up to the middle and then walk one step over on the uh, y-axis. I'd like to make that a diagonal move, but uh, Getting to the middle is a absolute maneuver, and then moving over uh, one width is a relative maneuver, and you can't blend relative and absolute. So that's something I'll have to figure out. Uh, that pause there is because the, sometimes the uh, Raspberry Pi and the smoothie board don't always uh, talk to each other super nicely, so um, that's just something you have to live with. It's uh, Asynchrony is uh, one of the one of the beasts of dealing with this. It's actually really pretty challenging to do this kind of back and forth where uh, the software running on the Pi is telling the, the machine where to go and responding to the probe. So you saw there it gave us the dimensions of the workpiece and then uh, went right back into the center. Uh, that hole actually isn't in the center of the workpiece if you remember from before. So we'll uh, speed up the rest of this because it gets uh, pretty repetitive pretty fast. Uh, we just saw it did a uh, probe to find the surface and then I uh, manually overrode the uh, Z Max and Z Min because I you know want to do a dry run here. I don't want it actually touching the workpiece. So you'll see that it's doing uh, G1 cuts in one direction and then coming back on the spring pass with a uh, G0 full speed and it's using the uh, mill height there as the maximum uh, possible path, uh, sorry, maximum possible depth on the cut. And uh, yeah, from there, it just goes through, it calculates the number of passes it needs to make in order to not cut too much at a time and in order to get to the destination it needs to get to. So I'm pretty happy with it. There are a few things I want to adjust in the future, uh, namely, uh, choosing if it cuts both directions, one direction or the other direction. Uh, I'm even considering doing uh, like gradient cuts, having it go deeper as it goes across and kind of zigzag its way down and then do a straight pass across. I'm not sure if that'll be valuable or not, but uh, we'll play around with it and see what makes sense. So yeah, that's about what we've got for today. And thank you for watching as always, and we will see you next time.